<laughs> Blue Coal presents The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror in the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, the League of Terror. Ladies and gentlemen, the shadow's exciting adventure starts in just a moment. But first, I'd like to ask you homeowners a question. Do you want to cut down winter colds, protect your family's health during this dangerous winter season? Then burn blue coal for clean, safe, helpful heat all winter long. Blue coal is Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. And its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when it comes to fuel, insist on blue coal. Order it by name. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. With the court's permission, I'll rephrase that question. Mr. Sullivan... Do you know how these counterfeit one and five dollar bills came to be in the cash register of your grocery store? I, uh, I got them from customers, I guess. Michael Sullivan, you're a witness in a federal trial. Under oath to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Do you know you can be sent to prison for perjury? Yes, I know it well enough. Before this trial began, you testified that the defendants in this case, Slater and Marino, entered your store. But they forced you to buy counterfeit five and ten dollar bills to be passed out and changed to your unsuspecting customers. Why have you changed your testimony? Why? I was mistaken, that's all. You're lying, Michael Sullivan, lie. Order, order in the court. Mr. Prosecutor? Yes, Your Honor. It is quite apparent that your witness has received a threat, either to himself or his family, if he testified against the defendants in this case. Since he will not repeat his sworn testimony against these defendants, I have no alternative but to dismiss the charges. Case dismissed. Oh, I never think that Mr. Order, order in the court. Your Honor, I demand that Michael Sullivan be held on a charge of perjury. Michael Sullivan, much as this court may sympathize with your reasons and motives for shielding these criminals who prey upon an unsuspecting public in the wholesale commerce of worthless counterfeit money, I have no alternative but to sentence you to one year in prison. Oh, one, year. one year in prison. But, Your Honor, there's my wife and my daughter, Mary. I'm afraid of what the dirty rats would do to them if I told the truth. I'm sorry, Michael Sullivan, but unless you testify... I can't. I tell you, I can't. Well, well, the sentence of one year in prison must stand. Court's adjourned. Oh. It ain't fair. It ain't right. I get a year in prison for trying to protect my family and the real crooks go free. Look at them walking out of the court free as the air to go on with their dirty business. Yeah, it's a good thing for his daughter Mary that Sullivan took my warning. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, boss. Lamont, of all the unfair, unjust sentences... I know, Margot. It seems cruel, harsh, but our whole legal system is being undermined by violence and intimidation of witnesses. Isn't there something you would do, Lamont, some way of helping Michael Sullivan? Sullivan isn't the only one who is suffering from the operation of this counterfeit ring. Small businessmen, shopkeepers... Poor people who can't afford to get bad money. A counterfeit dollar bill probably means the difference between eating and not eating to a lot of those people over in Sullivan's yeah, district. Exactly, Margot. This is operating among the poor people who can't defend themselves. Lamont, are you going to another case as the shadow? Well, later perhaps. Right now, Margot, Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane can help by doing a little shopping in Michael Sullivan's grocery store. <laughs> How's little Maria? Oh, she's sick. All the time she cries. Oh, what's the matter? I don't know. The doctor says she's only got enough to eat. I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, they can be helped me, Sullivan. Oh, I'm a mighty sorry they send your papa to jail because he, well, he won't talk enough. Father would have talked. He ain't afraid. Not for himself. He was afraid of what they do to mother and me. How is your mother? Not so well. She's been sick all along, and now with Father in prison, she can't understand it. I'm afraid for her. She's so sick. Mm -hmm. None of us don't understand. We're all afraid. Well, 
I'm not. I've got Father's gun here under the counter. And if any of that counterfeit gang comes around here again, I won't depend on the law to protect me. Oh, no, no, Miss Sullivan. You can't fight them. They're too many. Well, there'll be a couple less if they bother us again. Hush, Maria. Oh, hush, you can be on your baby. No, no. Miss Sullivan, you have so much trouble. I don't like to bother you, but... What is it, Mrs. Giovanni? But the landlord, he say that $5 bill that Mr. Sullivan gave me, it's no good. He say I got to pay the rent and put the money or get out. Look, he give it back to me. Another counterfeit bill, huh? I'm sorry, Mrs. Giovanni. Give it to me. Here. Here's a good bill. Mm. At least I think it is. A counterfeit bills are so good you can hardly tell their fakes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Well, here we are, Margot. I'll be with you in just a moment. Well, thank you. If you hear of anyone else who has any of these bad bills Father had to give out, let me know, Mrs. Giovanni. I'll make them good if it takes every cent we got. Oh, bless you, miss. Well, goodbye. You be mighty careful, Miss Sullivan. I will, Mrs. Giovanni. Good night. Good evening. What do you want? I think a couple of cans of corn and string beans. And a loaf of bread. Yes, and some butter. You're strangers in this neighborhood? Uh, yes, and get some peaches. Yes, two large cans of peaches. Strangers don't come way over here in this section to buy groceries. Who are you and what do you really want? Miss Sullivan, put away that gun. You're a courageous but a rather foolish young woman. Well, maybe so. But I got only myself to think of. I'm not like Dad, afraid because he had a family. Please, Miss Sullivan, we're not members of the counterfeit ring that's been terrorizing your father. How do I know that? If we were members of that ring, Miss Sullivan, you would have been shot long before you could get that gun. It's very obvious. Well, what do you want? For appearance's sake, in case this store is being watched, you'd better give us the groceries we ordered. All right. What was it now? Corn, string beans, and peaches. Here's the corn. Who are you, newspaper reporters or the police? Would you like to save your father from that year in prison? Yes, anything. It's killing my mother. Well, there's a man watching the door across the street in the doorway. I expected as much. Who are you? How can you save my father? Get the father? Yes, sir. Now, the other things. Keep moving. But listen to me. Yes, sir. You're a brave girl, Miss Sullivan, but your life won't be worth one of those counterfeit bills unless you use your head. What do you mean? Do you know enough about this counterfeit ring, how they operate, who they are, to make them fear you will talk? know how they operate, but Slater and Marina are the only ones who ever came here. Slater and Marina will be out of the picture for the present. Don't stand there. Get me things. Anything at all. Make a package. My father never saw anyone else either. None of the big shots. I'll put this stuff in a paper bag. There's two men in that doorway across the street in Marlemont. Let me know if they start this way. Now, Miss Sullivan, I can't tell you who I am or exactly why I'm here, except that I was in court today. I want to help you. I can if you're willing to take a great risk to help your father. I'll do anything for Dad. If I don't get him out, I'm afraid my mother will die. If I only know who's behind Slater and Marino, who's that boy? You can find out. But you know what happens to those who know too much. I'll take that risk. How can I find out who they are? By pretending to know more than you do. I don't understand. Those men across the street will undoubtedly come in here in the minute we leave. They'll question you. Pretend you know how they operate. Yes. But you want to be paid to keep quiet. The chances are they'll take you to a higher up. Maybe not the ringleader, but someone who knows the real leader. But Lamont, they'll kill him. Not until they find out how much she knows and who else shares that knowledge. Anyhow, I don't care. It's only fair to warn you. You're taking a desperate chance. What have I got to lose? They'll probably try to put me out of the way anyhow. The whole neighborhood knows how I feel about him. I said I'd kill him for what they'd done to my father if I ever found out who they were. Those men are starting this way. You've got to go, Miss Sullivan. Better think over what I've said before you act. Oh, I'll do it. My mind's made up. Come on, Margo. Lamont, aren't you letting that poor girl take a terrible risk? Margo, that girl was marked for death before we came here. What are we going to do? Look, Lamont, those men, they're going in the store. Margo, get a taxi and get out of this district. Be sure you're not followed. Go to my office and keep the shortwave radio tuned in on the band I always use. All right, Lamont. But won't you tell me what you're going to do? There's no time, Margot. I've got to see where they take her. From now on, the fate of Mary Sullivan 
is in the hands of the shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, the shadow will be back with you in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to tell you some interesting facts. In the Dominion of Canada, where there is a temperature range of almost 200 degrees, from warm summer days to frigid Arctic nights, the selection of fuel is a serious problem. And the tremendous popularity of blue coal in Canada under these varying conditions is positive proof that blue coal gives steadier, healthier, more dependable heat than you can get with any other fuel. You homeowners here in the United States should be just as critical in the selection of your fuel. And when you choose blue coal, you'll find you're getting better heat at less cost. For blue coal is a selected Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that burns longer, more economically, down to a fine powdery ash. What's more, anthracite is the fuel that furnaces parlor stoves and cooking ranges in this part of the country were especially designed to burn. And the finest anthracite in America is blue coal. It's mined by the famous Glen Alden Coal Company. And every carload is tested and retested for purity and uniform size before shipment. Blue coal is especially prepared for home use. It comes in all the popular domestic sizes, egg, stove, chestnut, and pea size. So solve your problem of home fuel selection by placing your order for blue coal tomorrow. Ask for it by name. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer the first thing in the morning. You'll find him listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Where are you taking me? Shut up. Get in, kid. Sit down and keep quiet. Come on, come on, get up, sister. Here, I'll take the blindfold off your eyes. Why'd you bring me down to the waterfront? I do as I'm told. You better learn the same thing. Where are you taking me? Maybe this is the end of the line for you, Mary Sullivan. You, you wouldn't. I wouldn't, we though. But not without orders from the big boss. What do you know about the big boss? Plenty. Then your number is up all right, kid. Them that know plenty about the big boss don't live long. You're still alive. Yeah, sure. Because I don't even know who the big boss is, and I don't want to know. It ain't healthy. Trigger. Who's that? It's me, Rankin. You got the Sullivan thing? Yeah. Here, she is. Yeah. So I see. It's a nice look at Listen, Rankin, she says she knows plenty about the big boss. I'll say I do. You're a liar, Mary Sullivan. But you do know too much about the rest of us. You better get in touch with the big boss before you do anything to me. We don't bother him with all the details of this counterfeit racket. Well, you better bother him about this. And you know, Rankin, I think she knows something. Shut up, Trigger. I'll do the thinking around here. Maybe she does at that. I know plenty. And I'm not the only one. Say, what happened to that fellow in Dame that was in a Sullivan grocery just before we snatched her? The guy got clean away somehow. Yeah, what about the Dame? Yeah, she took a cab. Smitty trailed her, but she gave him a slip. Switched cabs in traffic somewhere. Maybe you better take this kid to the big boss. Not till I find out how much she knows. Come on, Trick, make a talk. You know how. All right, kid. Do you spill what you know, or do we have to get it out of you the hard way? Let go of my arm. I won't talk to anybody but the big boss. And he'll pay me plenty to keep quiet. You can't scare me like you did my father. <laughs> she wants Doe to keep quiet. Shut up, Trigger. Twist her arm. Give her a sample of what's coming to her if she don't talk and talk fast. All right, kid. You ask no. for it. Oh. Oh. No, I want to. Oh. Hey, you dope. She's fainted. I guess I twisted her arm too hard. <laughs> hey, Rankin, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I heard it. What was it? The trap. The cops must have found us here. Come on, let's take it on the lamp. No. no. Wait, we can't be that dame here. You take the pull up and kid, I'll shoot out the light. Don't draw your gun, Trigger. Don't move, Rankin. He knows who we are. Trick. There's something story about this. That voice, it's right here, but there ain't nobody with it. You're mistaken, Rankin. There is someone here. What kind of gag is this, Rankin? I don't see nothing, but I... Jerry, I'm getting out of here. Wait, Trigger. Trigger. Do you remember Lefty Sims? Sure. 
The best thing a man in the eat, but... He tried to shoot it out with a voice. The police got him. But when he went to the chair, there was only one name on his lips. Remember? A shadow, Mark. That's what it is. It ain't the police or the feds. It's the guy nobody's ever seen. The shadow. They say he throws a sort of spell over the guy's mind so you can't see him. Oh, shut up, you crazy. Yeah. It's just somebody throwing his voice. I've seen him do it in Fordville. Come on. You pop that light and let's break for Wait. I'm not going to stop you. But before you go, take this message to your leader. You better listen to him, Rankin. You can't outsmart that guy. Nobody ever has, not for long. Tell the man who controls this counterfeit ring that preys on the poor and helpless. Tell him that if anything should happen to Mary Sullivan, he will answer to the shadow. Drake, he's right in front of us somewhere. Take a couple of pot shots. Maybe you can get him. No, not me. Can't you see the shadow set the shake down the big boy? If you won't shoot, I will. I'll get him even if I can't see him. A gun won't help you, Rankin. Oh, no. We'll see about that. Uh, yeah. You've got him. Talk about luck. Yeah. Well, let's get going while our luck's still good. I don't know if I killed him or not, but I must have winged him. Come on. Grab that Sullivan Damon. Let's get back to the big boss and tell him what's happened. Yeah, how? Where are we going? I got a speedboat waiting under the wharf. Come on. We're heading down the bay. about bringing the Sullivan Dame to his hideout. Yeah, I hate to think about it. You're about to steer the boat. You watch that Sullivan Dame. She ought to be coming too by now. Yeah, she's coming out of it. Hey, how much farther we got to go? Yeah, we're practically there. You see that yacht laying at anchor out there? Holy cow. You mean that? That's the big boss hideout? Yeah, it's right. You're finding out something you're liable to wish you'd never heard about, much less seen. Yeah. You mean that's the plant, huh? That's where all the phony dough's been coming from. You catch on quick, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. That's the layout the feds and cops have been looking for for months. Classy, ain't she? All right, here we are. Get that Sullivan thing on her feet. Yeah, okay. Uh, but how about me staying in the speedboat? That's been doing. You're coming aboard and telling the big boss what you know about this shadow. Uh, nobody knows much about you it. You better spill what you do know and speak fast, Rick. The big boss is the head of this racket because he can think faster than you can shoot. He gets the idea you're in the shakedown, you're as good as dead. I ain't pulling no double cross. I swear I ain't like Shut that. Shut up and bring that dame aboard. The boss knows how to handle her kind. Watch your step or you'll get what's coming to her. Okay, okay. Come on, sister, come on. Before the night's over, I got a hunch you and me are going to wish we'd never seen this ritzy cub. Margo Lane. Margo Lane. Listen carefully. Act quickly. The life of the Sullivan girl depends upon it. Telephone Police Commissioner Weston. Have him notify the harbor patrol boats that they will find the leader of the counterfeit ring on board the large yacht anchored off Diamond Point. Hurry. Okay, there you are, Rankin. Listen, boss. No, you listen to me. I've warned you never to come to this yacht without orders. But, boss, I had... What's the idea of bringing Trigger and that Sullivan girl here? You know what happens to those who break the rules of my organization? I couldn't help it, boss. This is important. She ain't seen anything. I locked her in one of the cabins. I decide what's important. Why didn't you report first? There wasn't time. I was going to report, but then this shadow started talking to us in the warehouse. The shadow? Yeah. You tell him, Trigger. Never mind. I've heard all about the shadow. So he's on the trail, eh? Yeah, to shake down, boss. Shut up and listen to me. The shadows behind this, it's no shakedown. What is his racket? Putting organizations like mine out of business. Putting fools like you and Trigger in the electric chair. Yeah? Well, he won't. Because I got him back in the warehouse. You... You what? Yeah, boss. I get to the couple of wild shots where the shadow's voice was coming from, and we heard him fall. Uh, how do you know that fall wasn't a trick? How do you know he didn't follow you here? No boat trails on No, I suppose it didn't occur to you that he might have been hiding in the speedboat with you. Where's that Sullivan girl? Bring her in here. I'll get her, boss. She's locked in the next cabin. 
blanket. You're a fool. You let Trigger and the Sullivan girl in on something they're not likely to forget. And you know what to do. Take care of them. You mean fix them so they won't talk? Permanent? Do you know of any other way? But listen, boss. The Shadow said if anything happened to Mary Sullivan, you'd answer to him. You leave the Shadow to me. <laughs> the Shadow? He ain't dead. I didn't kill him. That is a reasonable assumption, Rankin. Well, see, he's here in this cabin. I see my presence is accepted without question. Even though you can't see me. Rankin, shoot, you fool, shoot. Yes. Try again, Rankin. All right, Shadow. Maybe I won't miss this time. <laughs> hey, Rankin, what's up? Rankin. Try again. The door is getting out. First trigger, shoot, Rankin, shoot. Get out of the way, Trigger. Too much, will you? Torch, like. Put down that shadow. I wasn't shooting at you. It was a shadow. It was here just a minute ago. I care about the shadow. All I know is I got a load of lead in me. Your lead, and I'm going to. Don't shoot. Bad, Rankin. Too bad. Couldn't have polished me off like I did him. Quick and easy. Trigger. Shadow. Trigger. That man there. The big boss. Ordered Rankin to kill you. Trigger, he is your real enemy. Yeah, yeah. I had a notion he might try it. Don't raise that gun, Trigger. Yeah, I know that one. If I do, you'll kill me. You can't kill a guy with as much lead in him as I'm carrying. You can't kill a guy that's already dead. Perhaps not, but I can't avoid the risk that you have strength enough left to raise that gun. Oh. You're a better shot than Rankin. Rankin, you're a better shot. Not bad. Not a bad gag. And now, we are alone. Yes. Yes. Quite alone. And now, I'm going to deal with you, Shadow. Your hand is shaking. Is that the way for a mastermind to act? You devil. If I could only see you. But you won't get away. And neither will you. I've notified the police. Their boats are coming. Listen. Oh, oh, so, so that's it, eh? Yes. That's it. They're coming to get the leader of a counterfeit ring. But they will find a murderer. A cold-blooded killer. Locked in this cabin with his victim. <laughs> that's what you think, but you're mistaken. Why are you putting down your gun? Are you giving up so easily? Listen, Shadow, I've heard a lot about you. You're clever. Well, I'm clever, too. Clever enough to know when the game is up. I've anticipated just such an eventuality. <laughs> I suppose you can see this little switch on my desk. My hand's resting on it. Yes. Yes, I see it. You know what will happen if I close this switch? And I will if the police set foot on this yacht. I think I can guess. Well, I'll tell you. This switch will set up a charge of high explosive down in the hole that will blow you and me and the police to kingdom come. I see. If you touch me, try to stop me, I'll throw the switch. What do you expect me to do? You call the police and you can send them away. What makes you think I will? If you don't get rid of them, I'll throw this switch. What have I got to lose? Well, there they are. Put them out in big fast. Will you send them away? <laughs> You think I'm bluffing, eh, Shadow? No. No, you're not bluffing. I have no doubt there is high explosive in the hold of this ship. But I wonder... I wonder if you have nerve enough to throw that switch. I wonder. All right, Shadow, you had your chance and you wouldn't take it. Now I'll show you. I'll throw the switch... It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't explode. No. No, it didn't explode. The switch doesn't work because I've cut the wires. See where they run along the wall. You, you devil. I'll get you. They may get me now, but I'll get you. You'll never take me alive. Get that gun away from here. Is that the 
I guess it's the man we're after, Commissioner. All right, you, come on, get going. Yes, Commissioner Weston, that is your man. That is the leader of the counterfeit ring you've hunted so long. You win, Shadow. The Shadow. I might have known. I had a hunch it was you again when the mysterious call came through. Commissioner Weston, there's a girl in the next cabin. She said she isn't a member of the gang. She is Mary Sullivan, daughter of Michael Sullivan. Convicted of perjury in the counterfeit trial. Sullivan's daughter? Yes. She risked her life to find these men. Reward her by getting her father out of prison. He'll be freed in the morning. You have my word on that. It looks like you're due a reward for this night's work, Shadow. My reward, like yours, Commissioner, is in protecting the defenseless from those who have not learned that crime does not pay. the many copyrighted stories that appear in the Shadow magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious, and its similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort.